What is next for the Detroit Tigers? Well, today we are going to find out. Now, draft to glory is always a slow and steady process. We're already over a decade into this, but this team, admittedly for the last season or two, has disappointed a bit, and certainly the expectation this year has to be playoffs. And it has to be, because as you'll see here, I mean, you look at the depth it's turned around. I know it says starting pitching were dead last, apparently, but you'll get a look at this roster here in a second here before we truly begin. And again, I put no stock into these ratings whatsoever. I mean, I could probably look at speed and find teams manually that we are faster than. But you look at this lineup here, it would be a very tough pill to swallow if we were not to make the playoffs this season. It really would be. I'm actually surprised Parra is down to that low of a rating. But you look at the depth here. Jeff Mendoza is a complete player at 26 years old. No quirks, apparently, though. But an amazing leadoff option. Scotty Valentine behind him at just 23 years old, heading into his third season. Then you have Ernie Christensen, Ralph Mosley, Justin Summers. And you look at the batting ability of these guys. Cabral, Para, Miguel Coronado, who we have moved over to third base, and Chad Brown. And then you look at the bench. Newton, Lee Ju, Charlie Marez, and Carlos Quevedo. There is no reason for this team to not make the playoffs. That is a playoff caliber lineup. Now the pitching on the other hand, maybe that is our Achilles heel. We have Ken Linder, Jed Jordan, Ken Francis, Alan Boykin, and Mitch Vargas, who's been called up. Geraldo Garcia has also been called up to be the long reliever because I just don't trust John Keita or Charlie Hudson at this point. The stats last year just scared me off, so I wanted to look at something else. But the bullpen isn't the strongest in the world, but it's hardly the weakest. And again, back-ended, you know, backstopped by Eric Encarnacion, who is just, just ridiculous. A career 1-3-5 whip at this point, 4.0 war, and a 362 career FIP home run per nine at 115. I mean, he is, he is ridiculous at 28 years old. So this team, I mean, again, there is some depth here. There are some call-up options. This team simply has to make it. There is no excuse this year. We have to make the playoffs. And I really hope that we do. The top prospects at the start of the year, though, Miguel Coronado won't be there for much longer. Bobby Gaucho at number 12. And I honestly don't know if we're going to have anybody else. It doesn't really look like it, which isn't that surprising, seeing as we've been having later picks in our draft. Uh, record hasn't been that great. Now, yet again, I am going to stay alive with the uh, early scouting just because I want to follow along with this team and see what happens in the early stages of the season. I mean, obviously I'd be doing that anyway, but this gives you guys a chance as well to follow along. So if you don't want to see what happens or you don't care what happens in the early stage of the season, skip a couple of minutes ahead to when we're at the draft. Quick and easy. But for now, we're going to be starting our season off against Minnesota here at the end of the week. And we're going to see what else we have going on. It shouldn't take that long to scout all of our pitchers, which already concerns me about the quality in the upcoming draft. I think as it should. It's not looking that good. Unfortunately, it hasn't been great for a while. We start off the season with uh, we start off the season with a 3-2 win over the Twins. And let's hope that's just a sign of more things to come. We do win our very first series of the year as we have all of our pitchers discovered. I'm fully expecting that we'll have more catchers available to us in the draft. For whatever reason, there's just always a ton of catchers. It's kind of been a theme in this series, and obviously we've had that issue. There you go. Actually, we've already found all the catchers. So, you know, I, I don't think I'm holding my breath for this to be an amazing draft if we've already found all of the pitchers and catchers available in this upcoming deal, as Cleveland gives us a little bit of trouble. Not exactly panicking that we're 3-3 three and three through six games, but again, win please. <laughs> That's the point. 
For the love of God, win as Cleveland's continuing to give us trouble. All the infielders have already been found. This is going to be an extremely weak year for us, which is brutal, because this is the first year that we have compensation. The good thing is, though, we'll get a lot of those picks out of the way early and get some higher quality in comparison to what we've had over the last few seasons. Because, again, I just I don't buy that we're 25th. I don't buy it. You're telling me Coronado is that low at an 83? Everyone has that high of rating, apparently? I don't believe you. Uh, so there we go. The outfielders have all been discovered. So, catchers. Do we have anybody available? The Brazilian, Carlos Batista. Minoso is not available. Out of Puerto Rico. Ray Lopez, not available. Pedroza, not available. So, one catcher. That's good. The Mexican, Derek Valentin at first. Sam Mason out of Venezuela, which is totally what you'd expect. Again, no, we couldn't work on the name pool this year. Nope, nope, we just, we're just going to change. We're just going to change basically nothing and call it good. But hey, at least Diamond Dynasty has arguably the best content in any online kind of deal. I don't know, Mutt this year is pretty much on point, but... You get what I'm saying. Salty franchise mode guy. What can I say? Uh, we're going to go four days at a time here as we're on a pretty damn good run as of late. Eight and one in our last nine games. Second base, Cyrus Alvarez not available. De Los Santos, the Mexican we'll take a look at. Joaquin Rivera not available. The third, Frank Mateo and the Cuban Sean Gill both not available. James Dupree is Venezuelan, apparently. Neville Borowitz from the Dominican. You see what I mean about region accurate names? Good God, guys. Like, come on. We're, we're better than this in 2019, aren't we? Franchise mode is about immersion. I'm sorry. I'm not buying a Ford Cutliff from Canada, maybe. And Jesus Christ, I hope we end up with him. But come on, man. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. This is going to be Harrison Hudgens out of Germany. This is going to be the least amount of players that we've had in the player pool. How is Peter Wynn out of fucking Vent or out of the Dominican? He's not Vietnamese? Like, really? Jesus. Brian Olivos, Cuban. We have never had so few options. Mitch Severino is there. This is going to be the worst draft yet, so we better hope that our current core can win games because there's not much help on the way. There is not much help on the way at all. But hey, we'll put up with it. Again, Olivo wasn't available. Wilkins out of Canada. And then in right, Flores, no. Buster Yang out of Taiwan. What a name. Mateo's not available. Gonzalez is not available. Ortega is a no. Gonzalez is a no. Caruso is a no. So that brings us to pitchers. Already, Victor Moya is not available. Pineda is not available. Perez isn't available. Cairo isn't available. <laughs> oh boy, MacArthur is available, the Canadian. And what about Ryan Buxton? Yes, so we have some Canadian relievers. The relief comes in from Canada to save us all, as we are up to 19 and five on the season. Don't get too excited yet, though. I'm saying that to me <laughs> because let's be honest. My hopes are up. Russ Orosa from Mexico. Fred Wallace, another Canadian reliever. Valenzuela's from Cuba. Dominican. 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 Puerto Rico. Dominican. So that brings us to the starters. Barrera, no. No. Actually, no, Colombia is available. I don't think I missed out on any other Colombians. I was just getting used to saying no. And the Panamanian, Carlos Vesperas. So, 42 days out from the draft. Right now, we are doing incredibly well as we crush Houston over the course of... I mean, we won the series. We didn't quite, didn't quite crush them. Maybe they should have stolen some signs. That's right. I said it. Astros fans. Cry into that freaking World Series trophy. Just like everyone else Red Sox fans to do. Uh, Ariano is not available. Carnets. Nope. 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 Yes, Keonis. Moda? Nope. And uh, Richard Kuo, Taiwanese, is available, so that's good. 
Let's see what happens here in this series against the Yankees. We lose three out of four. Disappointing, but 23 and 10 on the year. Can hardly complain. Let's see what else we have here. Escobar's a no, 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 no. Yes, Chris Hayes, the Canadian. Vigna, no, yes. Sasaki is a yes, and I believe he was the last one. So, to the draft we go. Let's see how this team does leading up to that point. As thus far we're kind of crashing back down to reality. A few more losses than I would prefer to see. We crush Seattle, beat Houston, lose two games to Pittsburgh, beat the Red Sox, beat the Twins, lose to Seattle. Yes, lose to Seattle. But here we are. So 23 losses. That's not too bad. 37 and 23 on the year. That sees us three games back of Cleveland for the AL Central lead. We are currently top of the wild card. Pretty good start. Jeff Mendoza is third in the league in batting average, hitting 352. Valentine's struggling in the two spot at 194. Ernie Christensen, not too bad. Ralph Mosley, still all or nothing. Summer's looking all right. Cabral is killing it, but again, I kind of have to leave people in a certain order because of their uh, expectations. Coronado's hitting 300 right now, <laughs> which is very good. So we're going to leave it. We're going to leave it. Only nine at-bats for Liu at this point. Merez is doing well. I mean, these three being on the bench and doing well doesn't surprise me in the slightest. So to the draft we go. Let's see if we can somehow make the best of this as Ford or Rutliff or Cutliff. Rutliff would have been even better. Ends up going to Kansas City. So I don't really have a hope that there's going to be much available here for us, guys. I really don't. Abraham Rodriguez is not good <laughs> at all. What about Vesperis? He's okay. Lack of controls concerning. Peter Dunn. That's going to be a no. Vesperis is probably the favorite right now. That's not saying much. Derek Valentine. Nope. Yeah, we really needed to end up. We really needed to end up with Cutliff, and we didn't. Walter Sasaki gives up hits for days. John Wilkins. Oh my God. All right. Carlos Vesperis is the pick. This is this isn't even worth talking about, to be honest. And I figured that would uh, that'd be the case, which is why I stayed live. Didn't make the old jump cut. It's gonna be bad. It's gonna be real bad. Our compensation. Jesus Christ. We have more picks than available players. Period. Yeah, we just about have more picks than uh, than selectable players. Eddie Velasquez looks pretty good. Decent. Sasaki is a no. Severino, eh. Kionis, not so much. Valentin, not so much. Lopez, not so much. Well, let's, uh. Good old Pete Dunn. Snapping fingers, but Eddie Velasquez is going to be the next pick. This is going to be very uh, starting pitcher heavy from the looks of it. It's just not going to be very fun. <laughs> so we have six picks in a row with six players left to choose. Fun! Well, we're going to go for Reyes as a starter. We're going to get Alexi Lopez. I'm just going to write down all, type down all of their names right now because we might as well. Vladimir Kionis are the starters. So let's take Reyes. Let's take Lopez. Let's take Kionis. So, uh, yeah, as far as who we lost and the compensation we got for him, probably not ideal, but the players that we lost were people that we really needed to lose because as it is, you've seen the lineup, and uh, we already have too few spots for too good of players. But if any of these guys somehow managed to be half decent, that would be pretty cool. I'm not exactly holding my breath, though. De Los Santos is that pick. And then the final pick is Mitch Severino, the center fielder. Good old 
old Mitch Severino. So there we go. That is it for our draft. God help us if we had any more competitive balance picks. But uh, that'll that'll do it for our draft. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The good thing is we had no other compensation picks. That was it. So I probably will sign all of these guys, even though uh, the argument of whether or not they're worth signing. Well, let's let's just call the spade a spade here, right? So let's see how we did. I expect nothing, and nothing is what we get. So Carlos Vesperis actually isn't that bad. It's a decent starting pitching pickup for us. 66 overall at 19 is pretty damn good. Eddie Velasquez is just not. <laughs> that's the... That's, yeah. Eddie, I'm taking you off the list. I'm not going to sign you. Reyes is terrible. Lopez is terrible. Vladimir Quiones can be signed as a C potential. He's all right. Derek Valentin is awful out of 43. I'll sign him for the moment. And then De Los Santos and uh, Mitch Severino. I'm not even going to bother. So, yeah, there you go. Boy, those compensation picks really paid out, didn't they? Good God. So now we get to focus on the task at hand, which is what we're hoping for at this stage, and that is regular season success and hopefully us clinching a playoff spot. But right now we're still still struggling a bit more this month than what we are used to seeing. But we are going to obviously have a winning record heading into the All-Star break. So we'll sim our final game here as we complete the sweep of Miami. We do not have a participant in the Home Run Derby in Baltimore. These are the names. A couple of reps from the Reds. And let's see what the All-Star game looks like here, shall we? What do we got? What do we got on the AL side? So, in terms of pitchers, we have Eric Encarnacion. <laughs> to the surprise of nobody. How many times has he made the goddamn All-Star game already? Unreal. Absolutely unreal. He has been incredible, and I hope to God he gets to pitch a playoff game. And then... We do have a starter. Ernie Christensen is going to be the starting catcher. Do we have anybody else? We do not, which is a bit concerning. So Ernie Christensen and Eric Encarnacion make the All-Star game. Standings-wise, we are currently just a game and a half back of Cleveland. They have three games at hand, though. And we are atop the wild card. Two games over Baltimore for that top spot. Pitching-wise, Linder, I mean, without getting into FIP and everything, like he's he's been okay with that 4-1-1 ERA. Jordan, okay. Francis has been decent. Boykin's been decent. Vargas has also just been okay. Garcia hasn't been a great long reliever for us, though, unfortunately. Cole Bong. Mon oh, excuse me, Montez, Reyes, Rivera, Short, and Encarnacion. A little bit worried about Garcia. Let's take a quick look at AAA here. And it would be... I mean, I don't know if... I don't, I don't think I want to play Bobby Gaucho in the majors this year. But you see, Hudson and Keita aren't exactly killing it right now. Down in the minors like they should be. It's pretty frustrating, actually. They should be much better than they are. So, I think we'll just have to stick with that for the moment. And then lineup-wise, Mendoza still looking pretty damn good. Scotty Valentine has been abysmal at the plate this year. That is shocking. Absolutely shocking. Cabral's been amazing. I think we're going to leave it all the same. Unfortunately, Chad Brown hasn't really been much better. So while there are some struggling players, the lineup is going to stay the same as we move on here. Let's let's see what happens. I'm sticking with the players that have gotten us to this point, and we're going to see if we finally get to be a damn playoff team this year. That's really the only focus, as we just destroyed the Twins, who are uh, a 500 team, actually. I thought they were going to be a hell of a lot worse. We win the series against the White Sox. It's decent, uh, decently big trade there. Split two games against Philly. We have... 
Four games against the White Sox, who of course won the division last year. And we split that. Three games against Tampa heading into August. And we've already won the series. Will we sweep them? No, we will not. So three games against Kansas City. We're 22 games over 500 here. As some more deals go through, can we beat the Royals? Yes, we can. Three games against the Orioles. Can we beat them? No, we can't. That gives us four games against Cleveland. These need to be wins big time. And thankfully, we win three out of four. Two quick games against Pittsburgh again. We win both of them. Three games against the Nationals. We win two out of three. So 76 and 49, we are well on our way to being a playoff team. The Indians still have games at hand, but right now we're looking good. We're looking better than we've ever looked in the regular season, all but a guarantee that we are going to make the playoffs for the very first time. And then obviously there's some conversations that could be had as far as who should be where in the lineup. Also, of course, morale really has been a factor in where certain people are playing. Jesus Christ, Charlie Morez has gotten to play a lot. It's insane to have players of that caliber not in our regular lineup. It's insane. So, hey, a little bit of depth never hurt anybody. Three games against the Blue Jays. We win that series. Three more games against the White Sox. We win that series. Four games against the Angels. We do lose three out of four. And then we have three games against Toronto. Quickly, lineup-wise, Jed Jordan, I get that you're hurt, but that's not where you should be. Wait a minute, did it make call-ups for me? I guess maybe because injury management's what it is by default. That's still super weird. We have three games against the Blue Jays. Heading into September, we get swept. So, not ideal as we slip up a little bit. We're still ahead of Cleveland on 81 wins. But, again, we've, we've slipped up just a little bit down the stretch here, which is pretty rough. And lineup-wise, I just wanted to make sure that everything was as it should be. So, here we go. I mean, 81 wins, 89 right now for Colorado is the best in the majors, but we're up there. Let's see if we can punch our ticket to the playoffs for the first time. It'd be shocking if we didn't. The big question is seeding. We absolutely kick Cleveland up and down the field. 84 wins and some good old-fashioned separation. The Indians are really struggling. And we get that distance that we need. Now clearly atop the division. Can we do against Atlanta? Oh boy. I'm going to hit OK to that. Because I want to change it myself. Who the hell got hurt? Because that is not, not ideal. What's the injury and how bad is it? That is the question. Ken Francis is up. Oh my god. So we just lost our ace for the rest of the year. We're going to make the playoffs for the first time. But then we lose the Australian ace right before the playoffs. That's, that's really what we needed in a series where we, we make it this difficult for ourselves. is a swift kick to the dick like that. We lose that series to Atlanta. We beat Minnesota again. Three games against Texas, we get swept. Three games against the Angels, we get swept. And now we're only two and a half games above Cleveland. What the hell is going on, guys? Can we please not choke this away? Four games against an under 500 Cleveland team. We split it. Two games against an under 500 Philly team. We win both. So three games left this season. We are playoff bound no matter what, though. For the very first time, the Tigers have made the playoffs. We are finally back. And I hope it doesn't seem like I skipped over too much of the regular season, but obviously this was the main event. And it's mission accomplished, thankfully. Four games clear of the Indians and White Sox. As long as we do our job, we are winning the AL Central. As far as the AL is concerned, only the Red Sox have a better record at 95 wins. So, we'll be looking okay and we'll avoid 
We'll avoid, uh, I mean, uh, it's going to be a relatively tough matchup regardless, I suppose. Kansas City, we lose. Kansas City, we win. Have we clinched the division title? No. We have not. Yes, we have. X has clinched the division title. I'm used to I'm used to NHL. Sorry, I just recorded uh, the Sharks episode that went up alongside this. We won the division title. We're playoff bound. All is well in the world. 92 and 70. We're taking on Texas in round one. The Red Sox will play the winner of New York and Cleveland. And in the other wild card, it's Pittsburgh and Arizona. Winner plays Colorado. Miami plays Cincy. It's just a massive sigh of relief. That's what it is. We finally made the playoffs. Thank God. As we've had some league leaders, Alan Boykin was top in win percentage, which is just kind of cheating. I do want to look at the team stats now that's worth looking at. Batting average, we were 13th. In terms of total, uh, total run scored, we were 7th. Hits, we were tied for 15th. Doubles, a bit further back than I would have thought with some of the power we had on this team. Damn, only 26, maybe a lack of speed. Dingers, though, third in uh, Dingers. Good stuff overall. Let's take a quick look. You know, we normally save the awards for last. There it is. MVPs to Pete Alonzo and Fran Mil Reyes. Cy Youngs to Andre Wallace and Grayson Rodriguez. Batting titles to Ray Gehrig. Alabama. Alabama born and Vlad Jr. No reliever of the year there. Rob Jones wins it in the NL. Rookie of the year, Felipe Mota. And Miguel Coronado. You knew he was going to be special from the moment we drafted him. And he very, very much is. A season to remember all around. As again, playoff bound for the very first time. Just our second time finishing over 500 in a season. Now, the issue here is I don't know what the hell we're going to do. Can I add John Keita? I can't. So we're in a little bit of trouble here with the old uh, September call-ups issue. So we're going to be a pitcher short because this game hates me. But I highly doubt we're going to be using Garcia. i got to put him there, but it's pretty much going to be a four-man rotation. Linder, Jordan. Let's go. Yeah, Linder, Jordan, and Boykin will be the guys for us. And then long reliever, even though I'm going to be in full control. Gerald Short is the man. I'm going to have him as our long reliever for the moment. And Jonas Rivera will be moved over there. So I'm thinking that's how the pitching is going to shape up. Eric Encarnacion. 45 saves, 8 blown, 1 hold for him. Just unbelievable how good he is. Rivera was a hell of a Rule 5 pickup. Andrew Montez was strong this year. And then we get to the lineup where, again, Jeff Mendoza, tremendous season as a leadoff man. 28 home runs, 69 RBIs, 70, 72 strikeouts, 19 stolen bases, though. 906 OPS. Tremendous. Scotty Valentine struggled a bit at times in comparison to what he is normally capable of. We're going to need to have him wake up in the playoffs a little bit more. Ernie Christensen, pretty damn good. Slugging was down a little bit, but overall the numbers were up. Well, I mean, home runs and RBIs were, yeah, you know. Ralph Mosley, I mean, does what Ralph Mosley do. It's either he hits the ball and it goes far, or he doesn't hit the ball at all. <laughs> but he is an amazing uh, fielding catcher, of course. Justin Summers, 26 home runs, third straight season with at least 20, and 833 OPS, a new career high. You have uh, Jaime Cabral, who was incredible, 911 OPS, 407 on base. Para, 83 RPIs, 763 OPS for him. Miguel Coronado, 21, 82, and 819 OPS, unbelievable. And then Chad Brown, bringing up the rear, though. Still much, much better uh, now that he's played a full season in the majors. And then again, you see some of the options that we have on the bench, and it's just... It's unfair. It is legitimately unfair to these two in particular that they're on the bench, but the options are great. 
as far as the players that we do have. So, um... Did that not say sim to playoffs? Or did that say sim to offseason? What the fuck just happened? <laughs> 